What's up guys? We have a ton of PlayStation news today, so let's jump into what's new. Let's get to the most exciting part, that design. The PlayStation 5 looks like a futuristic piece of hardware. Those curves are sexy and the color scheme looks absolutely amazing and familiar. It has an elegant look with sleek contours. The blue accents blend nicely with the white and black contrast. It'll come in two different models. The standard edition comes with a disc drive and a digital edition that doesn't have one. Unfortunately, we didn't get a price or release date, but that news is sure to follow. I'm still standing strong with my $499.99 prediction just from what they plan on offering as far as specs go. The digital edition will definitely be cheaper and future-proof since downloading digital games has become much more popular with faster internet speeds. Some of the specs we saw today include ultra-fast SSD hard drive, ray tracing, haptic feedback on the controller to make games feel more immersive, adaptive triggers, motion sensing, a Bluetooth connection on the controller for wireless mics, and a headphone jack if you still prefer using the cord, and 3D audio. They also showcased a new set of 3D headphones and a remote peripheral. But that's not all this event had. It showcased plenty of great games that I'm just dying to play. Let's jump into the games. Sony showcased some great games, but there were definitely some highlights that stood out above the rest. The event opened with a montage of gameplay from GTA and its online mode that has significantly evolved over the years. And while many were hoping for GTA 6, or at least an update to GTA 5's story, it looks like Rockstar has opted to further enhance GTA 5 for the next generation. But when you think about how much this game has sold, it's a smart decision. From the PS3 and throughout the PS4's lifespan, it has been a top 10 seller month to month. The new one will be enhanced for the PS5 in 2021, and owners of the PS4 version are going to receive free GTA Online benefits in the months leading to its release. My favorite announcement in this whole event was Spider-Man Miles Morales. This new game takes place after the end of the PS4 Spider-Man game and follows Miles Morales on his journey to discover his new abilities as Spider-Man. Not many story details were given, but I hope we get to see a mentor-student relationship between Peter Parker and Miles Morales. The new Spider-Man game is coming holiday 2020 and may serve as a launch title for the PS5. It even takes place during Christmas time. I'm excited to see how the world evolves from the PS4 version to the PS5 version. The next game follows the well-known PlayStation mascot, Ratchet & Clank. The new game will have enhanced graphics powered by PlayStation 5's architecture and include ray tracing. It was definitely the most visually stunning game in the entire show. The seamless transitions between the large, detailed environments using Ratchet's new dimension-hopping abilities were jaw-dropping. It moved fluidly and it seemed like it was making full use of the new tech in the PlayStation 5. Another one of my favorite reveals didn't get nearly enough showtime. Project Athia is a new IP from Square Enix. We were treated to a short trailer, but what we saw had me drooling for more. Please, Square Enix, show us some more of this game sometime soon. And while you're at it, show us the next installment to Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 2. Just, just waiting for that. And I honestly just wanted to mention this next one because of how strange it looks. Stray follows a cat in a backpack in a futuristic world with robots. Yeah, you heard that right. I'm not even sure what to say about this one, but it did remind me of that episode of Love, Death, and Robots, that one with the cat who sought to take over the world by killing the robots and enslaving them. Definitely watch that show if you haven't. It's pretty trippy. One of the main things that really set Sony apart from Microsoft is their first party exclusives. And Sony came flexing with some more awesome games that you're only gonna find on their console. They kicked it off with a new IP called Returnal a game that follows a woman in space that constantly re-experiences her own death. The gameplay looked good, and it certainly has me intrigued about where they're going to take this one. And you might have recognized a familiar face because Sackboy made an appearance. The mascot from the world of Little Big Planet is getting a new game, and it looks like it's taking pieces of the Little Big Planet world and placing them in a 3D platforming adventure game. It has bright and colorful environments paired with the charm of Sackboy, and it'll be a great competition for Mario. Nintendo has always let the pack in regards to quality platforming games, and I'm excited to see what Sackboy's big adventure will bring to the table. I always thought it was Sony's best chance at giving Nintendo a run for their money with the Mario games. This next game should come has no surprise to anyone because the NBA 2K games come out every year on every console, but the graphics on this one look absolutely insane. The details in the facial features and skin look realistic, and every drop of sweat could be seen in incredible detail. If this is pre-alpha footage, I can't wait to see what the game will look like. And holy crap, I didn't see this one coming. 
as I was watching it, I thought it was a new Silent Hill game. Resident Evil 7 paired a lot of old elements with the new and brought a lot of new things to the table, and this new Resident Evil Village game seems to be taking it to a whole new level. It was unrecognizable. I thought it was a completely different game. There were werewolves and witches. What? I don't think those have ever been in a Resident Evil game before, but I'm into it. I can't wait to see how this one turns out. I really hope they introduce some VR support like they did with Resident Evil 7 as well, just to make it feel more immersive. And I can't end this without mentioning Horizon 2 Forbidden West. Horizon was a new IP that instantly garnered a lot of praise. This new one will follow the main character Alloy as she journeys west to America. The world looks much more expansive with new locales, underwater exploration, and new enemy types. Overall, I gotta say Sony nailed this event. They showcased a wide variety of games that looked absolutely stunning. Not to mention all the first party exclusives that you're only gonna be able to get on their home console. When you compare it to Microsoft's lackluster showcase of the new Xbox, it's obvious that Sony is in the lead right now, but all of that can change. There's still no indicator of price, and Microsoft hopefully has more things to show down the line as we head toward the release of these new consoles at the end of the year. So tell me what you guys thought about the event in the comments below. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this and any of the other content I make. And as always, I hope you awesome people have a great day, stay odd, and I'll see you next time.